Acids and Bases, Part 1, The Acid Dissociation Constant. From this video, you'll be able to distinguish acids and bases on both the macroscopic and submicroscopic levels, apply the Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry definitions of acids and bases, and determine the relative strengths of acids based on the acid dissociation constant Ka. You'll also examine the autoionization of water. Historically, the first definitions for acids and bases were based on how these substances tasted. Acids have sour tastes. Acetic acid is the acid found in common vinegar, and citric acid is found in citrus fruits like lemons, limes, and oranges. Bases, on the other hand, are bitter tasting. They also tend to be slippery feeling. Sodium hydroxide is the base found under many kitchen and bathroom sinks because it's the active ingredient in drain cleaner. Ammonia is another base used in household cleaning when it's dissolved in water. These definitions are pretty useful, but chemists needed a safer way to classify substances as acids or bases. One model of acids and bases is the Arrhenius model. An Arrhenius acid is a substance that, when dissolved in water, produces hydrogen ions. Acetic acid is shown here dissociating into and coming to equilibrium with hydrogen ions and acetate ions. Arrhenius bases do not produce hydrogen ions in solution, but instead produce hydroxide ions. Sodium hydroxide dissociates as it dissolves into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. A more general model of acids and bases is the Bronsted-Lowry model. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that donates a proton during a chemical reaction. Here, hydrogen chloride donates an H plus to the water molecule to produce hydronium ion and chloride ion. Thus, hydrogen chloride acts as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Bronsted-Lowry bases are substances that accept protons during a reaction. The water molecule in this reaction acts as a Bronsted-Lowry base because it is accepting an H plus from hydrogen chloride to form the products. Water can behave as an acid or a base, and sometimes both, according to the Bronsted-Lowry model. The Bronsted-Lowry definition is a broader definition than the Arrhenius definition, so it can be applied to non-aqueous systems and describe acids and bases that the Arrhenius model could not. Here we see gaseous ammonia, a Bronsted-Lowry base, reacting with hydrogen chloride gas, a Bronsted-Lowry acid, to produce ammonium chloride solid in a reaction that Arrhenius would not describe as an acid-base reaction. Here's the generic equation for the ionization of some theoretical acid, HA, when it dissolves and dissociates in water. In the Bronsted-Lowry model, HA is an acid and water is a base, but the products of this equilibrium are also acids and bases. Two acid-base pairs are shown in this reaction. The acid HA forms the A- ion once it donates the proton. A- is considered the conjugate base of HA in this reaction. The base, water, forms the hydronium ion once it accepts the proton. Hydronium is considered the conjugate acid of water in this reaction. The reason that there are acids and bases on both sides of this reaction is because of the equilibrium that's formed. This generic acid ionization equilibrium can be understood as two bases, water and A-, both competing for the proton. If water is a stronger base than the anion, the equilibrium position will lie far to the right and most of the HA molecules will be ionized. On the other hand, if the anion is a stronger base, the equilibrium position will lie far to the left and most of the HA molecules will remain unionized. When the law of mass action is applied to this heterogeneous equilibrium, the equilibrium expression can be written as Ka equals the hydronium ion concentration times the anion concentration divided by the acid concentration, or more simply as the product of H plus and A minus concentrations over the HA concentration. Ka is a special equilibrium constant called the acid dissociation constant. It is specific for this type of acid dissociation reaction only. Let's practice writing equilibrium expressions for the acid dissociation constant in each of these reactions. We'll start with hydrochloric acid. The dissociation reaction between HCl and water produces both hydronium ion and chloride ion. 
The equilibrium expression then is Ka equal to the concentrations of products over the concentrations of reactants according to the law of mass action. Remember water is a liquid in this reaction so it's not part of the equilibrium expression. We can also write the dissociation reaction as simple ionization in which HCl forms H plus and Cl minus. The equilibrium expression would contain hydrogen ion instead of hydronium ion as shown here. What about acetic acid? When acetic acid dissociates, it forms hydrogen ion and acetate ion. Notice that the three hydrogens in the middle of the formula are not part of the dissociation reaction because those are part of the carbon backbone in this organic acid. The equilibrium expression would be the product of the hydrogen ion and acetate concentrations over the concentration of acetic acid molecules at equilibrium. What about this, although unfamiliar, acid, aniline? Ignoring the hydrogens that are attached to the carbon atoms once again, all we need to do is remove one of the hydrogen atoms that are attached to the nitrogen atom. This would produce a hydrogen ion and the neutral molecule C6H5NH2. The equilibrium expression would just be just as it's shown here with products over reactants. Here's another unfamiliar acid, the hydrated aluminum ion. How do we write this dissociation reaction in equilibrium expression? Recall that water can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid, and it could act like a Bronsted-Lowry base. Here, though, it's going to act as the acid and donate a proton. That's exactly what's going on. The hydrated aluminum ion dissociates into hydrogen ion, and this complex here that has five water molecules still and one hydroxide, forming a positive two cation. The equilibrium expression can be written as such using the law of mass action. So what's the point of the special equilibrium reaction and special equilibrium constant? Well, the strength of an acid is determined by the equilibrium position of that reaction. A strong acid is an acid that has such a large Ka value that the reaction essentially goes to completion. Pretty much all of the original HA molecules ionize and form hydrogen ions. With strong acid reactions, we won't use the equilibrium arrows because it's better represented with an arrow that only goes to the right. The conjugate base formed from a strong acid is a weak base. These six acids are strong acids. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydriotic acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. Every other acid is a weak acid. Weak acids have equilibrium positions that lie far to the left due to the very, very small values of their acid dissociation constants. At equilibrium, most of the initial HA molecules are still present, and only a small amount of hydrogen ions have been formed. The smaller the Ka, the weaker the acid. The weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. Some acids, like phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid, are called polyprotic acids because they have more than one proton that they can donate in Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions. These protons, though, are removed one at a time. Sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid because it has two acidic hydrogens, seen here in the 3D model as the white atoms on either end. Sulfuric acid is diprotic because of these two hydrogens. Sulfuric acid is also an oxy acid because it contains oxygen atoms in the formula. It's also unique because the first proton that's removed is a strong acid. The hydrogen sulfate ion formed is a weak acid, so it does not completely dissociate to form hydrogen and sulfate ions. Carboxylic acids, like the acetic acid molecule modeled here, are organic mo molecules. The hydrogen in the carboxyl group is the acidic hydrogen. The hydrogens that are attached to the carbon atoms are not removed, so they're not changed at all in any acid-base reactions. 
Use your knowledge of acid ionization equilibria to predict which acid in each pair is the stronger acid. Hydrofluoric acid or hydrochloric acid? HCl has an acid dissociation constant that's about a billion times larger than HF. So hydrochloric acid is definitely the stronger acid. In fact, recall that it's a strong acid, but HF is not. What about the second pair? Which is stronger, hydrofluoric acid or nitrous acid? Because HF has a slightly larger Ka value, it's considered the stronger acid. What about nitrous acid versus hydrocyanic acid? Nitrous acid has a larger Ka value, so it's the stronger acid for the third pair of acids here. But which do you think would be the stronger conjugate base? The nitrite ion or the cyanide ion? Remember that the weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. So cyanide ion would definitely be the stronger base. Water and some other substances are amphoteric which means they can behave as an acid or as a base, depending on what it's reacting with. Any aqueous solution will have water molecules that will donate protons to other water molecules in an auto-ionization reaction to produce hydronium and hydroxide. The auto-ionization of water equilibrium reaction has an equilibrium expression written as Kw equals the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration or more simply as H plus molarity times OH minus molarity. Since this is a heterogeneous equilibrium, the liquid reactants do not appear in the expression. Kw is called the ion product constant, and at 25 degrees Celsius, it can be calculated from the ion concentrations, and it's equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th power. Neutral solutions are solutions in which the hydrogen and hydroxide concentrations are equal. If there's a higher hydrogen ion concentration, then it's acidic. If there's a higher hydroxide ion concentration, then it's basic. For any aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius, the product of the hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations will always equal Kw, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th power. As a result, the ion product constant can be used to do many acid-base calculations. Like this one. What's the hydrogen ion concentration for a solution with 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar hydroxide? Is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Since the ion product constant at 25 degrees Celsius is known, we simply need to solve the expression for the H plus concentration and substitute the given hydroxide concentration. We don't even need a calculator for this calculation to see that the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 9th molar. Since this is less than the hydroxide ion concentration, whoop, not equal, but less than the hydroxide ion concentration, this solution is basic. What about this solution? This time we'll perform exactly the same calculation and discover that the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. Since the hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentrations are equal, this solution is neutral. What about this solution? This time we'll solve the ion product constant expression for the auto ionization of water in order to solve for the hydroxide ion concentration. Once we substitute the value for Kw and the H plus concentration, we see that this solution has a much, much smaller concentration of hydroxide 
than it did the hydrogen ion. Since the hydroxide ion concentration is less than the hydrogen ion concentration, it's an acidic solution. In this video, you've learned the Arrhenius and the Bronsted Lowry models for acids and bases. You've also used two special types of equilibrium reactions and their equilibrium constants to compare the strengths of acids and to calculate the concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. If you need to review these topics, consult the related pages in your textbook or simply watch this video again. Thanks for your time and attention. Next time, we'll look at pH and calculations involving pH for both strong and weak acids.